the lateral approach to the distal femur, known as the over-the-top approach. The lateral approach to the distal femur, known as the over-the-top approach. This video has been produced from a book source. We would like to thank editors Stanley Hoppenfeld, Pete De Boer, Richard Buckley, and we would like express special thanks for the medical illustrator Huey Thomas. The lateral approach to the distal femur, known as the over-the-top approach, is used in conjunction with the medial parapetellar approach for repair or reconstruction of the anterior cruciate ligament. Therefore, it is not used as an isolated incision. The approach exposes the posterior aspect of the intercondylar notch by passing over the top of the posterior aspect of the lateral femoral condyle. The lateral approach to the distal femur also provides access to the lateral aspect of the lateral femoral condyle so that drill holes can be made in the condyle, if they are needed, for reattachment of the femoral end of the anterior cruciate ligament or attachment of the femoral end of an anterior cruciate substitute. Position of the patient. Place the patient supine on the table with a bolster under the thigh so that the knee rests in 30 degree of flexion. Place a tourniquet high on the patient's thigh and exsanguinate the leg using a compression bandage or prolonged elevation before the tourniquet is inflated. Figure. Landmarks and incision. Landmarks. Palpate the posterior lateral margin of the lateral femoral condyle as it flares out from the shaft of the femur. Note the intersection between the iliotibial band and the biceps femoris muscle. Incision. Make a 10 cm incision parallel to and over the indentation between the biceps femoris muscle and the iliotibial band. Distally, the incision ends at the flare of the femoral condyle. Figure. Internervous plane. The dissection exploits the internervous plane between the vastus lateralis muscle, which is supplied by the femoral nerve, and the biceps femoris muscle, which is supplied by the sciatic nerve. See figure. Superficial surgical dissection. Incise the iliotibial band just anterior to the lateral intermuscular septum, in line with the skin incision. The incision is slightly anterior to the skin incision itself. Figure. Deep surgical dissection. Identify the vastus lateralis muscle anterior to the intermuscular septum, and retract it anteriorly and medially. Below the muscle lies the lateral superior genicular artery. It must be ligated, figures. Using cautery, incise the periosteum at the junction of the shaft and flare of the femur. Deep surgical dissection. Identify the vastus lateralis muscle anterior to the intermuscular septum, and retract it anteriorly and medially. Below the muscle lies the lateral superior genicular artery. It must be ligated, figures. Using cautery, Incise the periosteum at the junction of the shaft and flare of the femur. Pass a small clamp or a small cob elevator behind the posterolateral flare of the lateral femoral condyle, staying in a subperiosteal plane. Carefully carry the dissection distally and medially over the top of the lateral femoral condyle until the instrument can be felt to enter the intercondylar notch. Figure. Pass a small clamp or a Small cob elevator behind the posterolateral flare of the lateral femoral condyle, staying in a subperiosteal plane. Carefully carry the dissection distally and medially over the top of the lateral femoral condyle until the instrument can be felt to enter the intercondylar notch. Figure. Sticking to bone, pass the tip of the instrument anteriorly until it is visible in the knee, as viewed from the anteromedial incision, medial parapetella. Figure. Dangers. Nerves and vessels. The perineal nerve can be injured if the surgical plane is strayed out of to the posterior side of the biceps femoris muscle. The lateral superior genicular artery must be ligated. Otherwise, it can cause a large postoperative hematoma. The popliteal artery may be injured if the surgical plane does not remain subperiosteal. As the intercondylar notch is felt, Bend the knee to 90 degree to allow the popliteal artery to fall posteriorly with the joint capsule. Thanks for watching.
Subscribe Orthopedics Trauma in YouTube.